Next, Mr. Chameleon, the man of many faces. Tonight, we again present the famous Mr. Chameleon of Central Headquarters in his most famous cases of crime and murder, brought to you by the makers of Bayer Aspirin. As all of you know, Mr. Chameleon is known in the police as Chameleon, the man of many faces, who appears in various disguises to track down his prey. The audience always knows who Mr. Chameleon is, but the criminal he is tracking down seldom does. Tonight we give you Mr. Chameleon and the case of the Voices from the Dead. It is late at night, and silence has fallen over the charming old house where Rose Martinson and her widowed sister, Susan Black, lead a lonely existence. And in the midnight quiet of Susan Black's bedroom, the sisters are sleeping in adjoining beds. Susan is tossing restlessly, and suddenly she sits upright, staring into the darkness. Did somebody call? I, I thought I heard a voice. Mother, it's me, Roddy. Oh, Roddy. Roddy, I knew you'd come to me. What do you want, darling? What can I do? Mother, if you love me, if you love me... Uh, Susan. Susan, what's the matter? It's Roddy. Oh, I know you won't believe me, Rose, but he's he's here in this room. Are you out of your mind? Roddy was killed nearly two years ago with John, your husband. The dead don't come back to life. Oh, they do, Rose. They do come back. They do come back. Rose, did, did you hear that? Didn't you hear my Roddy's voice? Oh, Susan, it breaks my heart to see you like this. Ever since that fake who pretended to be a spiritualist got his hands on don't you... Don't say you... that. He's not a fake. I'm going to prove that he's a fake. Here, tonight. Don't listen to her, Mother, or I'll have to leave you and never come back. Oh, no, Roddy, no. Rose, you're driving him away. I won't let you drive the spirit of my child away. I'm going to turn on that light, Susan, and see who's here. See what unspeakable deception this is. And then I intend to send for the police. Oh, Rose, please, please, I beg of you, don't. Where's that light switch? I... <laughs> Susan. Help me! What's the matter, Rose? I'll put on the light. Oh, she's been stabbed with a paper knife. Oh, Rose! Who oh, killed Rose? Less than an hour later, in the same room, stands the famous detective, Mr. Chameleon, the man of many faces, the underworld's most feared man. He has just finished examining the body of Rose Martinson, and her sister, Susan Black, overcome with grief and horror, is saying to him half hysterically, oh, Mr. Chameleon, this, this dreadful thing, how could it have happened? I feel as if I'm going mad. Mrs. Black, your sister Rose was found in this room, stabbed to death with a paper knife. You were the only person in the room with her. And you admit the paper knife is yours. Yes, but if, if I killed Rose, I, I didn't know I was doing it. I may have done it in a dream, in, in a nightmare. That I... might be very difficult to prove, Mrs. Black. Mr. Chameleon, you, you must help me. I intend to, if you're innocent. But my job is to find the murderer, whoever it is. And if I'm guilty, if I killed my own sister, I want to be convicted. Tell me something. Did you and your sister live alone in this house except for Tompkins, your butler? Yes. We lived here alone. That is, after my husband and, and my son, Roddy. They were killed in an automobile accident? Yes, two years ago. But as I told you, Roddy has come back to me lately. Back from the dead. I heard his voice right here in this room. Did your sister hear it too? Oh, if she did, she wouldn't have told me, Mr. Chameleon. Rose didn't usually sleep in this room with me, but she, she was worried about me, and that's why she was here tonight. She had reason to be worried. What is the name of the man that you've been consulting? What 
Uh, this man who makes you think that you're hearing your son's voice. What's his name? I, I, I can't remember. I only went there once. I can't remember his name. Say, Mr. Chameleon. Uh, yes, Dave, come in. Uh, Mrs. Black, this is Detective Sergeant Arnold. How are you? What's on your mind, Dave? It's Tompkins, the butler here. He's got something pretty interesting to tell you. Good, good. What is it, Tompkins? Uh, it's about tonight, sir, before the murder. About ten o'clock, the doorbell rang, and a very odd-looking woman practically pushed her way in. Oh. And there was a man with her, too, but he wasted outside, and this woman ordered me to go upstairs and tell Mrs. Black she was here. What was this strange woman's name? She didn't give any name, Mr. McChameleon. She simply said to tell Mrs. Black that Madam was here. Mm -hmm. Only, I met Miss Rose on the upper landing, and she told me to put the woman out of the house. Did you, Tompkins? That was the strange part, sir. When I reached the lower hall, the front door stood open, and the woman and the man were both gone. I see. Mrs. Black, do you know who the woman was? It must have been Madam Lola. She... Tells fortunes with cards. I, I, I was only there once. And you remember her name? Well, she must have made quite an impression. Are you sure, Mrs. Black, that you can't remember the name of that man who says that he's a spiritualist? No. No, I can't remember. I take it you're pretty well convinced, Chameleon, that Mrs. Black is lying. Why, of course she's lying, Commissioner. She's protecting that man, whoever he is. Mm -hmm. Now, she's one of those highly nervous women. It's quite possible that she killed her sister Rose in a fit of madness. But I'm not entirely convinced. I think there's something horrible behind it all. What about this fortune teller, Madame Lola, and the man who was with her? Could they have hidden themselves in the house? Oh, yes, very easily. Huge old place. While Tompkins, the butler, was upstairs, they might have gotten in. Mm. Well, it certainly is a weird case. It is that, Commissioner. Two sisters, perfectly respectable women, alone in their bedroom. One thinks she hears the voice of a dead child. And a moment later, the other sister stabbed to death in the dark. And so far, no clue to the murderer and no apparent motive. No. Oh, uh, come in. Did you want to see me, Commissioner? Oh, yes, come in, Madeline. Mr. Chameleon wants you to work with him on the Rose Martinson murder case. Good. Madeline, you'll have to move out of your very comfortable apartment and into the Crown Hotel. Yes. And uh, make yourself inconspicuous. No one must suspect you of being a detective. But, Mr. Chameleon, why the Crown Hotel? Uh, Mrs. Susan Black, the murdered woman's sister, is moving there. She's out on heavy bail, and she's closing her house, though she's keeping Tompkins as a chauffeur. I want you to watch her discreetly, Madeline. I see. Is that all? No. I want you to do something else, too. I want you to go and question a fortune teller named Madame Lola. Now, my guess is that she's a front for this pseudo-spiritualist whom Mrs. Black has been consulting. Madame Lola looks the victims over and then passes them along to him. She and her kind are the vultures of the world. When do you want me to go to this Madame Lola's, Mr. Chameleon? Uh, this afternoon. Oh, and, uh, Madeline, while you're there, you may meet an old gentleman, Henry Lowry by name, wealthy, the soul of gallantry, and well over 60 years old. You, Mr. Chameleon, in disguise? <laughs> That's right, Madeline. I shall be disguised as Mr. Lowry. Poor, nervous old soul. He was made to order for Madame Lola and her pals. I consider it an outrage, the police questioning me, Madame Lola. I'm a hard-working woman trying to make an honest living by telling fortunes. I have a client waiting for me right this minute. He can wait. No, he can't. It's Henry Lowry of Lowry Industries. I'll apologize to him on my way out. Good day, Madame Lola, and you'll probably hear from us again. I don't doubt it. Mr. Lowry, will you go in, please? Madame Lola is ready for you. Thank you, my dear. Thank you very much. She's a tough customer, Mr. Chameleon. I couldn't get a thing out of her. All right, Madeline. I'll see what I can do as old Mr. Lowry. Mr. Lowry. Yes, Madam Lola. What was that young woman saying to you? Why, nothing. Fascinating place you have here, Madam Lola. All those stars in the ceiling and this dim lighting. 
Hmm, how different from the outer world. I feel that I'm about to be in communion with the unknown. Hmm, Mr. Lowry, I'm highly honored that you should come to me. How did you hear about me? Well, you're more famous than you think, Madam Lola. I've been to all of them, palmists, crystal gazers, but they haven't brought me in contact yet. In contact? With my little grandson, who was dead, and who was so dear to me. Perhaps, Mr. Lowry, you're asking too much of fortune tellers to put you in contact with the spirit world. Do you mean I should see a spiritualist, Madame Lola? Suppose I read the cards. They may tell us the proper step for you to take. Would you do that for me, madam? Here, now, let us see what the cards can tell us. I always take them off the top of the packet. The Ace of Spades. Yes, the Ace of Spades. Well, that card means death, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I, uh, I'm going to shuffle the cards again. Madam Lola, I am... Not the least bit afraid of death. Well, I am, Mr. Lowry. But uh, let us try again. The Ace of Spades. Oh. Ace of Spades a second time, Madam Lola. Something... Something is wrong somewhere. Mr. Lowry, I... I don't know whether it means your death or that someone is calling to you from the dead. The vibrations, they're... They're confused. I... Why, I can't continue. You'll have to excuse me. But, Madam Lola, perhaps I ought to uh, consult a spiritualist. Can you tell me the name? No, 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 no. I I am sorry. There's... There's no one I care to recommend. My dear young lady, how nice to see you here at the Crown Hotel. Oh, Mr. Chameleon, it's you. No, no, my name is now Henry Lowry. I just moved into the Crown Hotel this afternoon. Mr. Chameleon. I got nowhere with that fortune teller, Madame Lola. She's badly frightened. Either she knows who I am, penetrated my disguise, or else she couldn't make up her mind whether to give me the name of that fake spiritualist. What's she afraid of? The mysterious Mr. X, whom Mrs. Black was consulting before her sister Rose was murdered. But I... Oh, here she comes. So, uh, let's see if there's a way to uh, make her remember that name. Mrs. Black? Mm Mm-hmm, Mrs. Black, whose sister Rose, believe it or not, Henry Lowry was once very much in love with. But, Mr. Lowry... I'm sure I never heard my sister mention you. Mrs. Black, I worshipped Rose from the distance. I danced with her at one of the debutante cotillions when she was 20 and I was 40. Ah, yes. Those days of joy are gone forever from my life. Well, you have had your sorrows, my dear. Your sister's death was a horrible shock. Yes, horrible. Well, I shan't speak of it. Mrs. Black... Won't you have dinner with me? Give me so much pleasure. I'd be delighted. Mr. Lowry, I feel as if I'd known you always. And yet this is only the second time we've dined together. I feel the same way, Susan. I hope I haven't bored you with all my talk about my little dead grandson. Oh, no. Your Jamie was just the age of my son, Roddy. If only I could get in touch with my grandson in the spirit world. I'd give anything I have to hear his voice again. Yes, to hear his voice again. My dear Susan, we both know what sorrow is, how deep the yearning to commune with one that death has taken from us. Mr. Lowry, I'm going to tell you something that I wouldn't even tell the police. Not... Even the great detective, Mr. Chameleon. Really? I wouldn't tell him because I I wouldn't have them persecuting a saint. A saint? Yes. He brought my son Roddy back to me, back from the dead. And I know that he can put you in touch with your grandson. He's a very great man, Mr. Lowry. I'll I'll give you his address. His, His name is Professor Astral.
Mr. Chameleon and the case of the Voices from the Dead continues in just a moment. Next time you want relief from an ordinary headache, neuritic, or neuralgic pain, remember that one thing you can take with complete confidence is genuine Bayer aspirin. You can take it confidently of amazingly fast relief, for Bayer aspirin is actually ready to go to work in two seconds. And you can take it confident of really dependable relief, for no other pain reliever can match its record of use by millions of normal people without ill effect. Don't ever forget this unmatched record. It's important because it means you can take Bayer Aspirin sure in the knowledge that it will bring you the gentle relief that's important to your health. So don't experiment with drugs that have not been proved by years of successful use. For the two most important kinds of relief, fast relief and dependable relief, do as millions do, be sure with Bayer Aspirin. When you buy, ask for it by its full name, Bayer Aspirin, not just for aspirin alone. Get the 100 tablet bottle and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. And now back to Mr. Chameleon and the case of the Voices from the Dead. It is the following afternoon when we find Mr. Chameleon disguised as old Mr. Lowry, the wealthy believer in the spirit world, with his partner, Detective Sergeant Dave Arnold, on his way to see the mysterious Professor Astro. So you finally got the name of this phony spiritualist out of Susan Black, eh, Mr. Chameleon? Yes, Dave. His name is Professor Astro. A guy who brings voices back from the dead. And disguised as old Mr. Lowry, I'm going to have a seance with him in just a couple of minutes. Well, isn't that kind of dangerous for you, Mr. Chameleon? Looks like a long chance. It is dangerous. It is a long chance. If they know that I'm not Lowry, but Chameleon, the cop. This man, Astro, Dave, is connected in some way with the murder of Susan Black's sister. You'd better leave me. From here on, I am old Mr. Lowry. Yes? I am Henry Lowry. I'm here to see Professor Astral. Mrs. Susan Black sent me. Come in. I am Professor Astral. You are exactly as Mrs. Black described you. Your eyes are hypnotic. She told me you were very particular about who you accepted. I am, Mr. Lowry. I feel my phenomenal powers are too precious to be used indiscriminately. They were bestowed on me by supernatural forces. I'm sure they were, Professor Astro. Um, Mrs. Black tells me you had a dearly beloved grandson. Yes. His name was Jamie. He was seven years old at the time he was drowned. The same age as Mrs. Black's son, Roddy. Jamie was the dearest little boy, always singing and laughing. Used to whistle. For that tune, I got sixpence. Can't hear it now without... Without... I know, my dear Mr. Lowry. And you want me to put you in touch with your grandson in the spirit world? If you could, Professor Astral, I would give you... Anything you asked for. I want nothing for myself. Mr. Lowry, suppose you come to me at nine o'clock tonight. I think I'll be able to bring your Jamie back to you. Back from the grave. Bless you. Bless you. I'm a rich man, Professor Astral, and I assure you that... Professor Astral, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but Mrs. Black... (gasps) Mr. Lowry. Madam Lola, do you two know each other? This is a friend of Mrs. Black. Uh, A friend of Mrs. Black? Very dear friend. But, Professor Astral, do you know that Madame Lola wouldn't tell my fortune? She kept turning up the ace of spades, the death card. Mr. Lowry, I reach my greatest power at nine o'clock at night. So, could you come back then, at nine tonight? And now Mr. Chameleon, the famous detective, still disguised as old Mr. Lowry, is with Susan Black. But, Mr. Lowry, why is it so important that I do as you ask? My dear Susan Black, it's frightfully important, yet I can't explain why. You've been wonderful for me, Mr. Lowry. You know, it's possible that I killed my sister Rose. I may have had some dreadful nightmare. Would you like to prove it otherwise? Oh, yes, yes. 
It may be dangerous, but if you find your sister's murderer, if you cleared yourself, wouldn't it be worth it? Mr. Lowry, how are you concerned in it? I can't tell you that either. I can only keep on asking you to trust me. I trust you. Bless you. Now I have a nine o'clock appointment with Professor Astro. <laughs> Come, Mr. Lowry, I was beginning to worry. Professor Astral, you know I'm so anxious to establish contact with my little dead grandson, Jamie, that well, Many I... people are terrified at their first encounter with the spirit world. It is a terrifying experience. Professor Astral, I want to contact my dead grandson. If you succeed in doing that for me, I shan't be able to do enough for you. Mr. Lowry, sit down. I will sit down across from you. Now, please, you'll be silent. Place your hands on this table, your fingertips touching mine. That's an interesting screen you have over there. Looks like something from India. Please, Mr. Lowry. Sorry, Professor Astro. Is there anyone else in the spirit world you might like to contact first? Anyone who might act as conductor to your dead grandson, Jamie, perhaps your late wife? No. No, let her rest. Sit perfectly quiet. Relax. Relax. And let the spirit flow into you as it is flowing into me. Professor Astral. Professor Astral. Yes. Who speaks? It's completely dark. I I can't see you at all. Yes, uh, uh, Jamie. Jamie. Your grandfather is here. He wishes to speak to you. Give us a sign, Jamie. If you are near, give us a sign. That's, that's Jamie's tune. It's the tune he always used to whistle. Jamie! Jamie, is that you? Is it really you? Speak to us. Speak to your grandfather, Jamie. Jamie, I can't believe it. Speak to me again. Grandfather, if you want to be truly happy, give everything you can to Professor Astro. I will. I will indeed. Let me hear your voice again, little Jamie. What? I know it's the same voice. I'd recognize it anywhere. Thank you, Mrs. Black. That's all I wanted to know. Madeline, turn on the lights. What the devil is this? Mrs. Black, how did you get in here? She came with Madeline Evans. Miss Evans is a police detective, Professor Astral. Stay where you are, Professor Astral. I have you covered. But this is an outrage. Mrs. Black, why do you stare at me like that? Because that voice was Roddy's, my son's. There's no mistake about it. And yet you told poor Mr. Lowry that it was his grandson's voice. But it was, it was. It couldn't have been, Professor Astral, since I have no grandson. In fact, I am a bachelor. My name isn't even Lowry, it's Chameleon. Chameleon? You're Mr. Chameleon. The detective. Here in disguise. Yes. And I place you under arrest. Keep them covered, Madeline. Dave. We will, Mr. Chameleon. But what are you arresting me for? Surely you don't think I murdered Mrs. Black's sister, Rose Martinson? No. Rose Martinson's murderer is behind the door in that closet. Open that door and come out. But who is it? Who is it, Mr. Chameleon? It is the voice of Roddy, Mrs. Black. Roddy and Jamie and probably dozens of others. Come out of that closet or I'll shoot. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. I haven't got a gun. Tompkins. Tompkins, my butler. Yes, Mrs. Black. Dependable Tompkins. 
your butler and chauffeur, and also the silent partner of Madame Lola and Professor Astral, only not so silent. His specialty, my dear, was imitating the voices of children. He used to be on the vaudeville stage as a ventriloquist. How did you find that out? Detective Sergeant Dave Arnold found it out. You alone were in the house with Mrs. Black and her sister the night of the murder. You killed Miss Rose and she threatened to turn on the light. She surprised you. You didn't know she was there in the room. They are in it too, Madame Lola and Professor Astro. Oh, oh, yes. Yes, the three of you had this racket for years. You made a practice of getting jobs with lonely, bereaved women and led them to Madame Lola, who steered them to Professor Astro. But you, and you alone, committed the murder, Tompkins. <laughs> Mr. Chameleon, I can't believe that I'm actually free. I mean, free in my mind as well as literally free. Well, the evidence looked very black against you in the beginning. But, um, you see that motto on the wall of my desk? The innocent must be protected, the guilty must be punished. And I wish I could tell you how glad I am, Susan, that you were proven innocent. But Mr. Lowry was such a charming old gentleman. I'm sorry I've lost him. Well, now, don't forget you've acquired a younger friend in his place, Susan. Chameleon, the cop. And with these words, Mr. Chameleon concludes tonight's murder case. that millions get amazingly fast relief from common headache, neuritic, or neuralgic pain is to take quick-acting Bayer aspirin. Bayer aspirin is one thing that really works and works quickly, and you can see the reason why with your own eyes. Just drop a Bayer aspirin tablet in a glass of water and clock its disintegrating speed. Within two seconds, it will start to disintegrate, and because it does the same in your stomach, because it's ready to go to work almost instantly, relief comes with astonishing speed. In addition, you can take Bayer Aspirin with complete confidence, for of all pain relievers, none can match its record of use by millions of normal people without ill effect. So when you buy, be sure to ask for genuine Bayer Aspirin. Get the 100-tablet bottle, and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. Listen next Wednesday night at the same time for Mr. Chameleon, the man of many faces, in The Case of Murder from Across the Seas. The part of Mr. Chameleon is played by Carl Swenson, with dialogue by Marie Balmer from the original story by Frank and Ann Hummert. Music directed by Victor Arden. Your announcer is Howard Claney. <laughs> Friends, there's a new toothpaste in the market that you'll want to try. It's called Lion's Toothpaste. And it's not just another old toothpaste with an added ingredient, but is completely new and radically different in formula. For this reason, new Lion's Toothpaste does what no other toothpaste can do. Yes, laboratory tests on scores of individual teeth prove that it actually gets teeth brighter, two and a half to five and a half times brighter than any of the five leading brands, Brighter by far than any other toothpaste. So for a brighter smile, try this toothpaste that cleans without soap, polishes without chalk. Lion's Toothpaste. Listen for Mr. Chameleon in The Case of Murder from Across the Seas next Wednesday night at this time. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. (laughs) 